Hey guys, so today I thought we could do a get ready with me. It has been so long since A, I sat down at a vanity and did my makeup, and B, since I've just sat down and done a face of makeup on camera. So I figured we could do that today. I'm very excited. This is my first day using my newly temporarily organized makeup collection. If you missed my unpack and organize my makeup with me video, I'll leave it linked below. I kind of just want to play with makeup and just shop through my stash here and see what we come up with. Um, I'm probably going to be paying special attention to products that I haven't used in the past month, the products that were packed away, because I just, I've missed some of them, like my ColourPop Pretty Fresh foundation. I have missed this one so much. Um, I also do want to play with a couple of new products that came to me in PR. One of them is the new Urban Decay Lip Bond. So these are supposed to be like a hydrating liquid lipstick. Very curious to test this out. They actually sent me three shades. The third shade was Safe Word. I actually did already try this one on because it looked like a nude shade that I would like. I didn't end up liking this color on me. I felt like it looked very strange on my skin tone. Um, pulled a little bit too yellowy on my lips. So that one I'm going to pass on because it just didn't work out for me. But um, these are the two that I'm trying to pick from. And I actually did a poll on my Instagram stories on which one you guys wanted me to keep and try out. And the really vampy shade called Once Strangers has gotten the unanimous vote. So the other one was the shade Solo Player. That's like a really, really purple color. I actually just recently decluttered a lipstick this color because I never wore it. So I don't think it would make a whole lot of sense for me to keep this one. So we're going to test out this very vampy shade today. I actually am excited to have this kind of shade in my collection because I don't think I have any really vampy lipsticks right now. So this might be a fun one, especially for the fall. And then I also have two of the Estate The Sauce Multi-Purpose Liquid Illuminators. So these are supposed to be kind of like either a liquid highlighter or you can also use them as a liquid eyeshadow. I might try them for both today. And this is another situation where I'm not sure if I'm even going to open and keep both. But I might just test out this lighter color. This is the shade Sunny. And then if I end up loving the formula, I might go ahead and also keep the shade Georgia. Oh, that's cute. Which that one would make a good eyeshadow color for me. So we'll see. But I do want to test both of those new items out. And I also figured while we get ready, maybe you're getting ready along with me, we can chit chat. I did ask for some questions over on Instagram. So I'll be answering some of those. So we're going to hop on into those. I am going to go ahead and start out with the ColourPop Pretty Fresh foundation. I love this foundation so much and I've missed it. It's been so long since I've used this one. Still smells fine. If you heard the saga about my Kosas foundation, it seemed to have, the, the smell of it changed during the move. So it's looking like I'm going to have to toss that one, which is very sad because I loved it so much. Um, but if you have the Kosas foundation, and I know I've been raving about it since I tried it for the first time because I love it. It's a beautiful formula. But if you have that foundation, just be aware that it might not travel well. That was a bummer. And I've heard that a lot of people have told me that they've had similar experiences with other Kosas products. So I'm bummed. I feel like that's kind of the cost of clean beauty. They often don't use as many preservatives or as good as well-researched preservatives as non-clean brands do and therefore their products can tend to go bad a little bit faster. Oh and by the way the sunscreen I have on today is the Pipette SPF 50. How are your cats adjusting to the time and weather difference? They first of all they seem to be loving Seattle. Heidi has actually lived in Seattle before. I actually adopted her when I lived in Seattle a few years ago from Seattle Humane and um, so she'd already lived here before and it seemed like when we got here, she, well, she and Tala both adjusted the fastest. And Tala, who is Nathan's cat, well, she's our cat now, but she was his cat originally. Um, she has lived with him in LA for a few months as well. So she was kind of used to the city vibe and he remembered that she really enjoyed living in LA. But anyway, so we have the windows open pretty much 24 seven. We have screens, of course, but um, just to keep air circulating, keeps the apartment cool. And Tala and Heidi both remembered that from when they had that experience in the past and just immediately settled right in. They love sitting on the windowsill and looking out the window for hours. Now, B on the other hand, she started to really enjoy being able to sit on the windowsill and, you know, 
feel the fresh air in her face, but when we first got here she was definitely a little bit wary of it because she we never had our windows open in our previous place because we pretty much always either had to have the AC on or the heater on depending on the time of year so just never made sense to have the windows open in Georgia but B at first she was a little bit scared especially when she heard like a truck go by or a bus that would kind of freak her out a little and so she would hide a little bit behind the toilet was like her main place and then more recently she started hiding in this closet but the hiding has become less and less frequent and now she just kind of likes to nap here in this closet she's not even really hiding she's just she feels cozy in there but um anyway so it took me a little bit longer to adjust just to how different the the whole vibe is here in this apartment but now they are all thriving like they all seem to just be loving the constant stimulation of being able to go and look out the window and they feel they almost feel like they're a little bit outside I think they really like that feeling and um, as far as the oh I just realized that your question was how are your cats adjusting to the time and weather difference so the time difference they did seem a little bit jet lagged the first like week we were here and it's hard to say for sure how they were really feeling but they were definitely sleeping kind of at weird times or they would just be awake for a really long stretch of time where they'd normally be sleeping and I think part of that was also they were just exhausted from the plane ride we were all exhausted for like the first week after we finally arrived here but um, they definitely did seem to take about a week to adjust to the time difference because it is three hours earlier here than it was um, on the East Coast and the weather difference it is a huge difference they seem to be loving the cooler weather they seem honestly a lot more just like vibrant and active throughout the day and I think a lot of that is because it's not so hot here. They seem to be loving it. They really do. It's so sweet to watch them adjust and just explore their new home and I'm just so proud of them. I forgot how good that ColourPop foundation looks. It just makes your skin look so good and I'm wearing it over a very glowy sunscreen right now so there's a lot of glow coming through but this is the kind of foundation that's so flexible to what you put underneath it so if I wanted to wear this over a matte sunscreen that would also work totally fine it would just I would just have more of like a satin matte like blurred finish with it but it also adapts really nicely to having a really hydrating base underneath it. I'm gonna use my good old Oma Beauty contour stick love this any regrets on makeup you decluttered so I did do a big declutter before we moved just to kind of make sure I wasn't transporting anything that I didn't totally love or have a need for and I so far don't regret any of the declutters now I'm just now starting to use my whole collection again so maybe I'll realize like oh I wish I still had that thing but so far no I haven't missed any of it I can only think of one product that I've decluttered in all of my years of being a makeup collector I can only think of one product that I regretted decluttering I do wish I hadn't decluttered years ago the Milani baked blush in Berry Amour I think I had decluttered it just because I already had a similar ish shade in my collection but then I started seeing people talking about it and also just seeing people continue to rave about the Milani baked blushes I mean that is truly one of the those iconic drugstore products that has stood the test of time even as new blush formulas have come out the Milani baked blushes are still like such a cult favorite for really good reason so anyway at the time I didn't understand the beauty of that blush um, but now I do kind of wish I had it and I mean now that I'm saying all this, I really should just go ahead and buy it, shouldn't I? Yeah, I mean, because it, it's like $7. Why not just buy it and enjoy it? Because I don't think I have another blush that's that glowy, that's that kind of color. So I think I will buy it. <laughs> okay, I think I'm going to use my Milani Cheek Kiss Cream Blush in Nude Kiss. I love this so much. Just, yep, no smell change. I'm just checking. <laughs> no, the Kosas Foundation betrayed me I'm like okay which one of which, which of you others smells fishy too um, but that is the prettiest blush color of all time look at how just juicy my cheeks look that is my kind of blush would you share some of the non-beauty items you moved with you to Seattle yes so to give you a little recap on how we did our move. We sold all our furniture so we didn't have a need for like a moving truck. We drove our one car across the country and put as many 
of our things in there as we could fit. And then anything else that we wanted to take with us, we packed in boxes and shipped those. So we kept the number of things that we took with us to a real minimum or as much of a minimum as we felt was reasonable. So now I want to try this. This this looks too glittery for a cheekbone highlight. Let me swatch this on my hand and just see how much that glitter actually translates. Well, maybe I'll try it. It has kind of a wet look on my hand. I'm willing to try that on my cheeks. So yeah, let's go ahead and I'll just kind of... Actually, I'll put it on my finger and then dab it on. I think that's probably the best route to go. Did that lift up my blush? I think it did. Estate is just one of those brands I'm kind of like, what are you guys doing? <laughs> You know? So back to the question what non-beauty items we moved with us here. The way that we decided what items to take with us was basically anything that was valuable to us that would be hard to replace and things that were small enough to pack into a box. We didn't want to ship too many boxes so we just kind of narrowed it down as best we could but a few things that we did take with us, just adding a little more blush where it lifted up some of it, uh, were some of our nice kitchen items like we have three pans that we really like that were not cheap, so you know we wanted to keep those and those didn't take up much space in the car. Our kettle, like our electric water kettle that we loved, we took with us. Some of our like OXO kitchen tools, vegetable peeler, our can opener, things like that. That way we wouldn't have to repurchase all of those more expensive kitchen items once we were here. We took I think six of our coffee mugs, just we picked six of our favorites. Because we just have sentimental attachment to some of our coffee mugs. I feel like we can't be the only ones like that. Um, <laughs> we just love certain coffee mugs that we would be hard to replace. So we took some of those with us. We took our favorite like throw blanket that we had on our couch. It's actually one that I bought in a thrift store here in Seattle. And I love that blanket so much. It's originally a Target brand like sweater blanket. And it's this really pretty taupe color that goes with everything. And... That blanket came with us. We also took some of our nicer towels. We did have a couple of boxes we shipped of just our clothes, the clothes that we wanted to keep. A few just little home decor items that we really liked too that would be hard to replace. Um, things like that. Okay, here's a question that I'm so excited to answer. What are your favorite local treasures in Seattle? Food, shops, nature, etc. So, okay. Nature, Golden Gardens. Golden Gardens is beautiful. Um, any time of year, even if it's chilly, even if you're here in the winter, bundle up and go like go for a little walk at Golden Gardens. It's so peaceful there, even in the winter when it's gray and kind of foggy. It's mm, it's it's still so cozy, and in the summer it's just glorious there. Just go hang out, read a book by the beach. It's it's amazing. Um, and then I definitely have a few good food recommendations as well. They're all going to be very vegan friendly because my boyfriend and I are both vegan, so. You know, we're not necessarily going to like steak houses and seafood restaurants all the time. My favorite restaurant in all of Seattle is Wayward Vegan Cafe. It's an all vegan comfort food restaurant. So they have a lot of breakfast and brunch items, but they also do have lunch and dinner options as well. The menu is huge. It's a tad overwhelming. You really can't go wrong with anything on the menu. My favorite thing to get there is the breakfast club. It is a sandwich and the bread is French toast. And then inside the sandwich, it has like vegan ham, bacon, like I think it's like a tempeh bacon, and um, I think like a vegan egg as well, like a kind of scrambled egg, and like a little bit of a savory sauce, and then you can dip it in maple syrup. It's so good. It's like the perfect mix of sweet and salty, so that's my recommendation. And the chicken and waffles also incredible. And then in the international district, like Chinatown area, there's a really good all-you-can-eat Vietnamese restaurant called Chu Min Tofu. I just looked it up. It has 4.8 stars on Google, which is really good. 322 reviews. So good. We've been dying to go back there ever since we went a while ago. Really good Mexican food, El Chupacabra. They have a lot of really good veggie options. They have like some faux chicken and other like faux meats. So good. And then if you want really good vegan pizza, Pizza Pie Vegan Pizzeria in U District. Incredible. Oh, and then there's a really good Ethiopian restaurant in Capitol Hill called Queen Sheba Ethiopian Restaurant. Incredible. I've been there a few times and it never disappoints. So those are a few of my food favorites and I'm sure the list will continue growing the longer we're here. <laughs>
Okay, so I haven't been talking through what I've been doing, but it's very simple. Um, I applied Innocent to my crease. That's this light mauve color here, and then I put some of Loam in the outer corner, and now I'm building up a little bit of Claystone to deepen up the outer corner a little bit more. Just feeling kind of a nice classic sort of smoky brown look today. So those are the three colors I used from Sigma Enchanted. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and apply this Estate, the sauce, to my lids and just see how that works. It does seem to dry down on my on the back of my hand. It did set. I will say, for I don't think I would use this again as a cheekbone highlight because it's just a little bit too glittery. There's too many like obvious flecks of glitters. Although I will say from far away it looks really pretty. I don't think I love how obvious the chunks of glitter are. But I don't mind glitter on my eyelids, I can tell you that. Just kind of dab that on. This applicator is bent. I'm not sure why. I definitely didn't bend it. Okay, so there's what it looks like as an eyeshadow. It's not as it's not as blingy as I was kind of hoping. Like, I just feel like it looks very subtle, and it's not giving as much of that kind of glossy wet look that I was hoping for. I was hoping that it would maybe like on its own, like the if it were the only thing I were wearing on my eyes, maybe it would show up better. I don't know, I'm a little underwhelmed by how that looks. Also curious to see how it wears if it creases. I do have eye primer underneath, but we'll see how that wears. Okay, so I think I'm going to skip eyeliner because I don't want my eyes to be too defined because we're going to have such a strong lip. I kind of want to leave the eyes a little bit subtle, so I am just going to go ahead and apply my Urban Decay Lash Freak Mascara. Okay, so it is time to crack in to the Urban Decay Lip Bond in the shade Once Strangers. So this is what the packaging looks like. It kind of looks like their Vice lipsticks. I'll find one of their regular Vice lipsticks. So it's a little bit bigger, but very similar look. Um, and you are supposed to shake this before you apply it. So essentially this is supposed to be as long wearing as a liquid lipstick, but also is shiny. Okay, so I do want to put this to the ultimate test, which means I'm not going to wear lip liner underneath it just for this first try, just to see how it wears completely on its own. This is very dark, wow. Wow, okay, that's a lot more brown than I was expecting. Like in the pack, on the packaging, it looks like it has a little bit more red to it, but on my lips it looks so dark, it almost looks like a chocolate brown or something. Quite a color. Really excited to put this to the test though. The one time that I did wear the more nude shade called Safe Word, it did seem to last really well, but I don't think I tested it through eating, so we'll have to see about that, but mm, I forgot to put on setting spray. Okay, so I think I could get down with this color like in the fall, like around Halloween, I don't think I would mind wearing this. So basically this is supposed to set and remain shiny like this, but also not transfer. Alright, let's see how much transfer we get. Okay, so that's what I got. And that was after just a couple minutes of letting it set. So we'll see, but it still looks very opaque and still shiny so really excited to see how that continues to wear and I will keep you guys updated on that but I had so much fun just kind of sitting down and actually playing with makeup again it's been so long and it's also been so long since I've done a video like this where we just kind of chit chatted so thank you so much for spending some of your time with me today i really appreciate you being here if you enjoyed the video be sure to give it a thumbs up so that lets youtube know that you liked it and also subscribe to my channel if you've not already feel free to check out the patreon if you're interested in bonus content each month and otherwise i will talk to you again very soon in my next video bye